Throughout American history, in times of crisis, Americans have rushed to serve our country. We see people of all races, colors, religions. We see all ranks and all services contribute to the defense of our country. Whenever freedom or our way of life has been threatened, they have responded. As you walk through our museum, it's not the aircraft that are significant, but the young men and women who flew them in defense of our country. The young people who serviced the aircraft, operated the ships and manned the guns. They all came together to serve. That, my friends, is the real story told in our museum. When you think of the National Naval Aviation Museum, you think about airplanes, and rightfully so. We have over 150 aircraft that graphically and dynamically display the history and the heritage of naval aviation. But here in our museum, we also have a display that is not an aircraft, and it's our very own QB Bar and Cafe. It is very unique, there's none other like it, but to understand it, I need to give you just a little bit of background. The United States used to have permanent bases in the Philippines. Two of those bases were in a body of water called Subic Bay. There was both a naval station and an air station on Subic Bay. Virtually every ship during the Vietnam era and thereafter that went in and out of the Pacific would go to Subic Bay. The ships would go into the Navy base. They would refit, refuel, and get provisions. Aircraft would fly over to a spit of land adjacent to the Naval base called NAS, Naval Air Station, QB Point. The Officers Club at QB Point was a wonderful place to relax and celebrate life. And that's exactly what the aviators did when they went to the QB Point Oak Club. The way these plaques came to being is every aviation unit typically would come in and they would want to leave a memory of their time together, of their unit, of their names while they were there in QB Point. What they would do is they'd go to a local craftsman and they would hire them to make a plaque of their squadron and typically usually put all of their names down in this plaque. This particular plaque is a depiction of Mount Pinatubo and the disaster that resulted from the Mount Pinatubo eruption. It did devastating damage to all of the U.S. bases in the area and there was a disaster recovery effort to try to recover our U.S. assets and preserve the character of the base. This is one of our oldest plaques in the QB Bar and Cafe. This plaque is uh, heralding VA-172 during that time frame and all of the names of that particular squadron. This is a great plaque, and it's one where I happen to know one of the names personally. It heralds the participation of VF-51 in Pacific maneuvers during the 90s. The commander you see here is Commander Bob Willard, call sign RAT. RAT Willard was the operations officer for Fighter Weapons School for Top Gun when they made the film Top Gun. RAT Willard went on to become a four-star admiral. He was the combatant commander in the Pacific while I was in the Pacific with him. Sometimes, the plaques stand for themselves, but the story's not obvious. One of our heroes, national heroes, and heroes here in the museum is Captain Gene Cernan. When Gene Cernan was flying active duty, one of the squadrons he was in was Attack Squadron 113, the Stingers. This plaque represents the squadron that Gene Cernan was in before he joined the astronaut program. Over time, the United States decided to withdraw the permanent bases in the Philippines. A couple of astute commanders decided that, you know, we need to preserve these memories. We need to preserve these artifacts. So they loaded up all of these plaques that you will see in our cafe 
brought it here to the museum and we recreated the upper floor of the QB Point Oak Club right here in our museum for you to enjoy.